Sankirtan is being done with total fixing of the mind on Bhagwan. And if we do it the right way, at the end of which we would fall into a silence. It may sound strange, but it has been my experience. If the Sankirtan is done, knowing that the Nama is nothing but the supreme reality that's within us, the flame of life. The rare few times we could feel the mind going into silence, falling into silence, I should say, and it's difficult to speak even a word for some time. That is the greatness of this Nama sinking. Though we may think, we may underestimate its power, it has the power to take you straight into the silence. We have been seeing some glimpses, some stories of Bhagwan's glory, his name's glory. Today we shall see, Bhagwan had often said that whatever happens at any moment 
is the best that can happen at that moment. And everything happens only by His will. Everything is being arranged by the Divine, specifically and specially for the spiritual growth of that being. This is what Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarit Kumar has taught us. Now, when the Divine arranges things, and especially when we are aware that the Divine is arranging things of our life, there is peace at heart and then the hope that whatever happens is the, the best blessing for us. There is no better alternative. Now here is an interesting story of Professor Dr. Makarant Paranjpe, who was working in the Department of Humanities in the IIT in Delhi. He had done two chapters on Sri Aurobindo in his dissertation for PhD. So that way he was already introduced to the great master Sri Aurobindo of Pondicherry. Though he had heard so much about Sri Aurobindo Ashram, he had never visited it before. In fact, I remember his bringing a book on Sri Aurobindo Ashram in Delhi, a very interesting book with many revelations of what the great masters can do in certain circumstances. Bhagwan found it very, very useful, instructive and interesting. He made me read it several times. And gave me to understand that this is what he was doing also. Maybe we should go into the details of that some other time. Now we shall resort to more physical details of the experience which Paranjpe had. It was the first time he had come to Pondicherry. It was his colleague, one professor, Sachidananda Mohanti. It is he who introduced him introduced Sri Aurobindo Ashram to him and it is he who encouraged him to visit the ashram. He said his sister, his Didi, Minoti, is residing in the ashram and she would make arrangements for his stay. Now Makarant was all excited and when he reached Pondicherry it was the dusk it was slowly getting dark. Now as soon as he reached there, Pondicherry, he was in two minds. He, wanted, he, he was toying with the idea whether we should, he should go straight to the ashram to pay his respects, to pray, to offer his prayers of the Samadhi of Sri Aurobindo and mother and then find his way to the room which was arranged for him by Minoti. But suddenly this thought took over. He decided he would just go there to the room, dump all the things that he had brought, have a wash and then visit so that he could spend more time at the Samadhi. These things happen to all of us, two, two thoughts in conflict. 
and then always the brain decides. So immediately he went straight to the international guest house where his friend Mohanti said a room had been arranged for him. But when he reached the guest house, the manager was not there, he was missing. And in the register, his name was not there, which meant clearly no room was arranged for him in that place. He didn't know what to do, he never expected this. Temporarily he went, he was thrown into confusion and then he decided he would do his best. He went, he visited a few other guest houses and he found every house full already. And finally in one place somebody said, if you are not so insistent upon a single room, we could give you a dormitory space which you could share with few friends. Well, the feeling of surrender at last took over because he had no other go. So he decided, okay, now this is the offering to me by the Divine this moment, I had better accept it. And he did. He went to that place. As soon as he entered, he found the name of the hall where he was going to stay, Samarpan meaning surrender. He thought it was well chosen and he went and dumped his luggage there and quickly came out to visit the ashram. The ashram is, a, is the house where Sri Aurobindo lived and uh, it is there in the courtyard of the ashram, the house, his samadhi is, and mother of Pondicherry, her samadhi is also there. As soon as Makaran entered the ashram space, to his amazement, he found a beautiful stillness and peace. It was so wonderful a peace and one that he needed so much. He was completely taken over by that. He spent quite some time offering his prayers also and after which he went to the office of the ashram where the samadhi is. As soon as he showed his head there, showed his face, the manager there asked him who he was and where he was from. And he said, Makaran Paranjpe from Delhi. He nodded in acknowledgement and said, look, we have a note for you from Minoti. Oh, there it is. He knew then this note was waiting here, right near the Samadhi. Had he chosen to visit the Samadhi first, everything would have been much easier. And there Minoti has said, you have a room booked for you in the International Guest House. You could go straight there and rest. He had missed the letter by choosing to go to the International Guest House elsewhere. And because of which he missed out on this. Not only that, he missed this peace also. He would have had this beautiful peace as soon as he came to Pondicherry and entered the Samadhi. About this beautiful, deep, deep peace, a vibrant stillness, 
Bhagwan himself had commented to me when he was describing his journeys. The first time he took a journey to the south after he read the book Lights on Yoga with Sri Aurobindo and was told, was guided by Kapadiya Baba to go to the south to find his Guru. Kapadiya Baba mentioned Sri Aurobindo Ashram and then another giant, spiritual giant living in a place near Pondicherry. He must have meant Thiruvannamali though he didn't mention the name. So Bhagwan, when he came straight to Pondicherry, unlike Paranjpe, he went straight to Sri Aurobindo Ashram. And Bhagwan said, Devki, when this beggar entered Sri Aurobindo's ashram, he was struck by this deep, deep, deep peace, overwhelming him. This beggar felt a spiritual elation, a great spiritual moment of awareness and peace. And this beggar knew instantly that this peace is Sri Aurobindo. What a way to describe a great master. Bhagwan said, I could never forget this sentence that came from Bhagwan. How beautifully put. Who could have done this then? Bhagwan. This beggar knew instantly the peace that he experienced there is Sri Aurobindo. So that is the definition of, the true definition of the great masters, the criterion of a great master is the peace, the stillness, the great peace, the peace beyond that one experiences instantly. Makaran also had a taste of that and then of course he told the manager there in the auction office, since he had already paid in a different place and put the luggage, everything there, the manager said, okay, you come tomorrow, you can take up this room tomorrow, you stay the night there. Now Makarang, filled with the inspiration and peace of Sri Aurobindo and the mother, When I was describing Bhagwan's first visit to Sri Aurobindo Ashram, just see the torrential rain pouring on the roof of Pradhan Mandir. This is from the gods. This is from our Bhagwan in a pool of my description of his description of Sri Aurobindo Ashram. I do not know if you can hear properly. Are you able to hear? Just find out. Able to hear? Paranjpe returned to the dormitory and once again read what was written there, Samarthan. He was thinking 
If he had gone to Sri Aurobindo Ashram first, everything was already arranged, he would have had an easy way with things. So he decided, when you are on a mission to visit a temple or a great master, your job is, the first thing that you do is go to them straight and then do everything else. Now he learnt this. When he returned to the dormitory Samarthan, he understood another fact of life, a revelation. It is there he met one Pushkar from Thiruvannamalai. They fell into a conversation that night and Pushkar was telling Makaran to visit Thiruvannamalai also. Makaran said he had visited Thiruvannamalai at the age of 16 but he did not remember anything of her. And then Pushkar said, you go there, there is a great yogi like Sri Aurobindo, a Mahayogi, Ram Sarat Kumar. You must visit him. See, the gods are... The gods are responding to Bhagavan. The Mahayogi, Ram Sarat Kumar. Makaran understood that he should go there and see the yogi for himself. Pushkar also promised to take him to the yogi gave the address everything. So now, after his visit to Pondicherry, Makaran went over to Thiruvannamalai. Of course, Pushka, true to his word, took him to Sanadhi Street House of Bhagavan. And another, another day, we could, dis, we could go into the details of his first visit to Bhagavan. Enough to say that Makaran was completely drawn to Bhagavan by his, by Bhagavan's overwhelming love and care and blessing. He became a devotee of Bhagavan. Now this is to say, Makaran recalls the first time he visited he may came across the word Samarpan and he knew he did not do the surrender because he went straight to the guest house, not to the Samadhi of Sri Aurobindo. Though it looked he missed out on something. It happened that the Divine had deliberately arranged for him to go to International Guest House first so that he would find the dormitory for the rest and then he should run into Pushka. He got to know about Yogi Ram Suratkuma and how he became a devotee. The experience with a living master. Makaran says that after the Maha Samadhi of Bhagavan, Makaran has had many experiences with Bhagavan. Bhagavan became very fond of him, I should say, because Every time he came, Bhagavan would ask him to come to Sudama also. He would give him a special private interview. His 
First time visit to Sudama is memorable. Sometimes we could go through that also. Makaran had written, sent a book from Delhi to Bhagwan, and the book contains a short story on a Sufi saint. So the first time the book arrived with Makaran's dedication to Yogi Ram Surat Kumar, the first copy, Bhagwan said, Devki, you open the book. Wherever it opens, you start reading. And when I did that, it was the story of a Sufi saint. And the story was, became so dear to Bhagwan's heart because the story described Bhagwan himself. The Sufi saint, the description of the Sufi saint was so much like Bhagwan's. So Bhagwan would make me read several, several times. And the story says that the Sufi saint lived as a beggar in the streets, never had the protection of an ashram or a huge following. For most part of his life he lived in hiding. And after his samadhi, a few devotees built a samadhi for him. After that, hardly anybody visited the samadhi. It was in some corner of Delhi and nearby, a little away from the samadhi, lived a cyclist, a cycle repair shop owner who had kept a pot, a mud pot, a mud pot under a tree. For those people who would visit the Sufi saints, the rare few visitors who would come to the Samadhi, they would come in the hot sun of Delhi, sweating profusely, and the cyclist would put an old chair and offer a cup of cool water from the mud pot. And then the cyclist would start saying about the saint, how the Sufi lived. And the cyclist would say, the Sufi saint had no protection of an ashram. He has not built any temple, not written any books, not left any devotees either. But his very life was his message to the people. Bhagwan would make me read this again and again. Devki, read once more. Then when I came to this, his very life, the life that he lived, the message to the people. You see Devki? What he says about the Sufi saint, that's the way it is, Devki. The way the true saints, the true great jnanis live, they do not have to write anything, they do not have to build any temples. They need not have a huge following either, but every moment of their life is a message to those who care to see. Bhagwan loved the story so much because Bhagwan also not written any books, not built any temple except in the last few years at the compulsion of the devotees because he for the sake of the devotees, many, many devotees had started to come. And for the sake of the devotees, he de never lived in the ashram. He lived in Sudama, a little away from the ashram, would come only for darshans. He consented 
to building an ashram by the devotees for their own sake. He also said, this beggar's body should be kept somewhere. It's very important. This beggar's work must go on. And for that, the ashram came up. Three things that he insisted upon this, he said the ashram must have, like I said day before yesterday, beauty, divinity and durability. So Makaran says, after the Mahasamadhi of Bhagwan, he was confused a bit like every other devotee and the question came up to him whether he should visit the ashram because temporarily all the devotees would be shaken by the samadhi of a great master. It happens to all the devotees and all the great masters. The sudden dis disappearance of the master's form threw him also into some confusion. Then he remembered his first visit and the word Samarpan. He came to me and we discussed it and at the time I said, Makran, do you think you, you can escape after falling into his net? He has thrown his net around us. It's very difficult to escape from the net. And we laughed. And he said, when he went to Justice, Justice said, Makaran, your name is there in his register, Yogi Ram Srutkumar's register. Your name is registered. So what else can he do? So Makran says, after that the confusion cleared and he knew, like all of us, the only word he could remember is samarpan, surrender. Surrender to the will of the great master from moment to moment to moment and go with the flow of life. Whatever love life brings to you, be it good or bad, be it a joy or sorrow, it comes from the great master, specially arranged for you, like it was arranged for him when he visited Pondicherry. How, without any plan, he landed in a dormitory named Samarpan. That was the first visit to Samarpan and he knew his whole life had to be a Samarpan. The very first step and also the last step for any human being must be only surrender. So Makran says, to submit to the will of God as He arranges your life, every detail of it, it's the only way open to us. There is no choice. The choice is only an appearance. And Makarand has something very beautiful to say about the Nama. He says, once he visited his father's place, initially nobody bothered with him Nobody recognized him or gave any respect due to him. But the minute he said, I am Ramachandra Paranjpe's son, there was a sudden transformation in everybody. It had an electrifying effect. Everybody's face changed and there was new found respect 
a new respect, a new love, a new shine in their eyes. Said, oh, you are Ramachandra Parajpi's son, please come, come. He was such a good man. We remember him with great respect and love. And immediately he received their hospitality. Everything changed dramatically as soon as he mentioned his father's name. So Makran says, if a human father's name can bring about such a change in an atmosphere, what about the Divine Father? His name is the life that he lived. His name is the message of his life. Yogi Ram Sarakuma. Bhagwan said, this beggar leaves only one thing behind and that is his name, Yogi Ram Sarakumar. And later he said, it is not this beggar's name, it is my father's name. Those who chant this name, those who call out this name, my father would rush help to them, help, guidance and protection. And we know this to be the experience of all the devotees. See the name, the word of God. It has such power. Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar lives in the name today. The name Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar has all the power, all the grace of Bhagwan. Now we shall quickly switch over to another experience of another devotee, one Srinivasan from Hyderabad. In 84, he lived in Hyderabad and uh, he visited Chennai once because his wife had given birth to a baby and he was going to return to Hyderabad. He had fixed a date for that. He would come to Tiruvannamalai to visit Bhagwan now and then. So when he was in Chennai, the next day he was going to leave for Hyderabad. Suddenly he ran into this friend who appealed to him to take him to Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar. For ten years now, after the marriage, they did not have any ch child and he wanted Bhagwan's blessings. So Srinivasan took him to Sanadhi Street House, took his friend and his wife. And as soon as they entered, Bhagwan asked Srinivasan what his name was. Srinivasan says, every time I visited him, he would ask me, who are you? In the beginning, I was very upset, I was put off by that. And later, I understood it was Ramana Maharishi's famous mantra, who am I? So when I began to ask that same question to myself, I knew this was prescribed by Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar Bhagwan to me. Initially I just took it at a face value and used to get very upset. But then I knew that he was giving me my mantra. And when he visited with this friend, he says, Srinivasan says, that Bhagwan fell into a conversation with his friend and for nearly one hour and a little more than that, Bhagwan went into elaborate discussion on commerce and business. Just imagine the man had come with a prayer for a child and here Bhagwan ignored Srinivasan altogether did not even notice him, but entered into an elaborate discussion on business and commerce with his friend. The friend, so much so the friend forgot to ask for what he had come for. At the end of which when Bhagwan stood up and said, this beggar is going to leave you now. And then Bhagwan himself asked, do you people have children? And they were stunned because they had come only with that request and now Bhagwan himself was mentioning it and they knew that she knew. And then Bhagwan took his hand in his, 
held that friend's hand for some time and said, My father would soon give you a son. Don't worry. And of course, true to that, at the end of the year they had a son born to them. Srinivasan, for his part, when he returned to Chennai, the next day he was going to leave for Hyderabad, but he developed severe abdominal pain, unable to bear any more. He was rushed to the hospital and they had to do an emergency appendicitis operation on him. And then it struck him, he was thinking all the time that he was being ignored by Bhagwan. But then Bhagwan had deliberately delayed him so that this appendicitis operation, all his people were in Chennai, so they could look after him. They could rush him to the hospital in time and they could look after him after that also. Had he, had he gone to Hyderabad without visiting Bhagwan, he would have been alone, left alone there, unable to take care of himself. He would have suffered terribly. So Srinivasan says, whatever Bhagwan does, whatever Bhagwan did to him, there was something much more subtle behind it than what met the eye. This is what, there is what meets the eye for his devotees. That if you just leave it, the arrangement of the Divine Master, everything would work out fine. If we interfere with our brain, we would be inviting trouble. Now this Bhagwan is here right in front of us. We shall submit today's prayers at his feet. Bhagwan, again and again we appeal to you soulfully for your immediate divine intervention in order to free the world from the dreadful clutches of this virulent virus and bring back normalcy to the world. And Bhagwan, please remove the panic from the hearts of people and stop the spread of the disease, enter the vaccine so that it would work. It would kill the virus instantly and not only that, it should reach all the deserved people. And Bhagwan, all those sevaks, 